Okay, uh, so in our error correction and detection series, we're going to look at also another set of codes, uh, which are known as convolution codes. Uh, these codes are widely used actually in uh, wireless systems, like for example, your Wi-Fi uh, and your GSM also uses convolution codes. Uh, these are sort of in a scheme of something called uh, forward error correction schemes, where you can actually correct them. Uh, where a receiver can actually detect the code and at the same time correct them as well so the way this thing works is like this there's multiple way of doing it this one is a circuit level diagram which is based on flip-flops you can also do it using state machines you can also do it using trellis diagram as well uh, so we're going to use this approach uh, because uh, we're going to use flip-flops and we're going to shift as the data input stream is coming in uh, and based on that, oh, we're going to find out what is going to be our output. Uh, so let's review something. Um, so this is, is this is not a block-based um, error correction scheme. It's actually stream-based where you have data coming in in terms of one bit at a time. It will encode that uh, data. The data rate for convolution codes is normally one half. So the data rate is one half. What I mean to say is this every time you input a single bit, you will get two bits representation of same one bit with respect to two different bits. So for example, if you're inputting two bits, so you're going to get four bits. Uh, this is how it will work. So uh, so this is the basic definition of this uh, output, these output that you see. So it's G1D plus G0, G0 means there is no connection, so it's just an input stream, G0 is representing just the input stream, plus G1D, D is representing uh, flip-flops, so D with degree one, which means flip-flop number one, D with degree two, which means flip-flop number two, and de this degree of polynomial will also show how many flip-flops are going to be there in our circuit. So there are two flip-flops. So having um, GI is equals to zero, which means there is no connection, there's no connection to the flip-flop, it's just an input stream. Having one or anything other than that, anything other than zero, would describe which flip-flop is connected to. The output one has an equation that looks something like this. You will see a one just to represent the input stream. D, so the output of one is actually consists of three um, addition, which is based on modular two arithmetic. So it's going to, be <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> So it's going to be based on, so output one is going to be based on the input stream plus whatever the output of flip-flop one and whatever the output of flip-flop two XOR together, that's why you'll get output one. Output two is going to be G2D, which is one, whatever that input stream is, and D2, which is the output of that flip-flop two. <coughs> so let's take an input stream. Let's say okay, I have an input that looks something like this. Input. So let's say I have an input that looks something like this. One, zero, one, one. Um, the other thing you need to understand in order to use this, we want the inside state of these flip-flops to start at zero, zero state and n at zero, zero state. This is the condition to use convolutional codes. The initial state that we're gonna assume to encode our bits are going to be zero, zero, and at the end is going to be zero, zero. That's where we're gonna terminate this uh, convolution codes. So uh, in this way, uh, we will start with zero, zero state, and then we'll end with zero, zero state. So in order for me to start at zero, zero state, and end at zero, zero state, I will add additional two bits to it. To that input stream we haven't computed what my convolution codes what my actual data would look like with respect to convolution code this is just to start a machine my my linear feedback shift register or linear shift register to start at zero zero and end at zero zero so we're going to add these two bits and then i'm going to give you the encoded form later once we do that so encoded form will be here okay so i'm going to draw me a true table type of a structure so which is going to be something like this. So I'll have an input, I'll have an state, and then I'll have output one, and then I'll have output two. So I'm gonna make a small table like this. All right, so I'm gonna make me a small table like this. Okay, 
so in order for me to do that so what is so let's say okay i have first this data coming in so this is right here at this point what is the current state the starting state of my flip-flop both of them are at zero zero all right so input is one my state is zero zero what would be my output now so one zero zero so it's uh, we're using XOR XOR is actually based on modulo 2 arithmetic so basically you're gonna add number of ones and you're gonna take a mod with two in mod we're only uh, we're interested in remainder so one plus zero plus zero based on this one plus zero plus zero basically we're XORing it so one plus zero plus zero is one and one mod two would give me one so the first output is going to be one all right what is the second output so this is one that is coming in and then you have this zero which is also coming out from here so one plus zero would give me one all right so far so good good so now uh, this would go in this would go in and this will because the flip-flop is going to take whatever the input and is going to shift it to this side so now this would go in and this zero will shift over here so this will go in and this zero is shifted here so this is right here and our data the second data stream is zero say so uh, data a bit is actually zero so now what is the current state the current state has shifted to one and zero and what is my input that i'm representing is zero that I, I need to put here sorry not representing so what is going to be my output what is going to be zero one zero so one plus zero plus zero take mod of two i will get one all right and then what is this i have zero here and then i have zero here zero plus zero is zero zero mod two is zero all right so right now i have one and zero this zero will go in and this one will be shifted here so this zero goes in here and this one which was there in flip-flop one will go into flip-flop two so now the next state is one so this will change oh sorry next bit is one this will change to one so let's write this down so the next bit is one the state now is zero and one okay so what is one zero zero so this is one zero and then one so one plus zero is one plus one is two what is two more two is actually zero then I have this one that is coming out and then I have this one that is coming out so one plus one is two two mod two is zero all right so far so good so now what flip-flop will do when next bit will arrive it will take this and shift over here and it will bring this guy in so this will be shifted here this will be shifted here this input will go into flip-flop one and whatever was there in flip-flop one will go into flip-flop two so this would become one this would that zero has shifted this zero has shifted over here and this one has gone in like this and this one so this is my third bit now the fourth bit is one so i'm going to leave that as one okay so so far so good so let's write down our state uh, first the input which is one my state is one zero all right so now let's measure the output what is going to be my output one so output one is actually one that input plus this plus this xoring it so one plus one is two plus zero is two two mod two is zero so i'll get zero okay what about here now so i have one and i have zero so one plus zero is one one mod two is one all right so far so good so okay now i have another uh, data that is coming in which is this zero all right so far so good so this is this zero the zero goes in so this one will be shifted here and this one will be shifted here 
all right so when the next data will come in this one will go in here and this one will go here so i'm just going to simply move this raise this and make this one and i'm looking at it with respect to this input bit which is going to be zero all right so my next date is zero one one all right so what is zero one plus one one plus one is two two mod two is zero one plus zero is one one mod two is one are we good so far okay uh, i have another bit now last bit input bit which is zero so when this zero comes in when this last zero comes in the zero will be shifted here this one will be shifted here so let's change this to zero let's change this to zero uh, this one has shifted here this zero went in and then this zero is this so the next state is zero okay so this zero next state is zero one so input last bit is zero and state is zero one so let's uh, um, XOR it. 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 mod 2 is 1. All right. And uh, so this 1, XOR is 0, would give me 1. Okay. And how am I going to end my machine? I'm just going to simply bring this 0 in and bring this 0 in. That's it. This is where I'm going to end my machine. So it started off with a state of 0, 0. It will end at 0, 0. And if you look at this pattern, what I just did now, it actually exactly the same pattern. Once I have defined this, this 1 is coming in like this. This 0 is coming in like this. This 0 is coming in like this. This is coming in like this. This is actually, these input bits are becoming the state of your flip-flops. If you just follow the pattern, this is exactly what's going on. So this zero is right here, this zero is right here. Same thing with this zero goes here, and this zero goes here. So how are you gonna read off your data now? So you're gonna read off your data from left to right. So your encoded form is going to be from your left to right. So this is how you're gonna read off. So it's gonna go here, it's gonna go in like this, it's gonna go like this, like this, like this, in a zigzag manner. From left to right, from left to right. This is how you're going to read off your data right here and right here. So, so your new encoding bits that your new encoding bits for one is going to be, so your new encoding bits is going to be one, 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 zero, 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 one, zero, one, one, one. This is how your data encoded data would look like. So this bit this input has changed into one 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 zero 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 one zero one 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 this is how your encoded form of your data look like using convolution codes or it form All right, so as you can see, we have input how many bits? One, two, three, four, five, six, six bits, and we're getting how many bits out? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we're getting the data rate, we're getting twice of that, uh, whatever. So the data rate does matches. So it's like one half, the data rate is going to be one half, so you're getting double the bits out using convolution codes. So uh, I hope you like this small tutorial on convolution codes. Uh, um, 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 if you have any questions, ask in a comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.